So with the 31st pick in the 2023 NHL draft, the Colorado Avalanche back on board. They go defense this time with Mikhail Gulyayev from Omsk. And uh, Gil Martin here alongside with Hadi Kalakesh, our prospects expert. And now Chris Maselli from Locked On Avalanche joins us. And uh, Chris, you seem very happy with this selection. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I guess this is where I take my bow or something. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm half right because for our mock draft, this is who I had them taking. Um, it was a couple picks later, but obviously they liked him enough to go back and get him. Uh, I, I, of course I, I like this pick. I, I, he, he fits a lot of what the avalanche like to do. There's a lot of reasons why they went this route. Number one, like they love defensemen. Uh, if you if you couldn't tell, uh, what they have right now is a very good defensive unit, and they like what he can. Or I'm assuming they like what he can do offensively. He is a speed demon. Uh, they love fast offensive defensemen. That is exactly him. So he fits what they like to do uh, from a defensive style. We had Hattie on last week, and we discussed this pick, and the thing that stuck out (laughs) to me when Hattie said he is three, four, maybe five years away, and who knows what your defensive core is going to look like. What it could look like is you don't have Sam Girard anymore. His contract might be coming up at that point in time or a year left or something like that, and maybe that's when you – if you don't think you can sign him, he he could fill in for him. Uh, you don't know where Devon Taves is going to be after next year. Um, but what you will have is Kel McCarr and Bo Byram. Mm-hmm. If, if Taves is gone, you will have those two guys. That's your top unit. So you are not going to need Guliayev to be what either one of those two guys are. So whenever he shows up, he will slide in nicely to a, a probably second pairing and do what he does best, which is just jump off the screen offensively. I think that being a defenseman, it's odd to say, I think like his defense needs to get a little bit better, but I have no problem with that. If he's not going to show up for a few years, he can, he can, you know, work on those specifics. And by the time he gets to the abs, he'll be a much more fleshed out full defenseman ready for the NHL game. I think it's a solid, solid pick. Hadi, what do you like about his game? The transition game, the offensive ability, but especially for a small guy, he uses his skating so well to defend the rush. Uh, he's one of those smaller guys, a bit like Tanner Molendyke, who really use their skating to their benefit uh, off the rush. Just one push, and he's in the way of the defender. He's able to close gaps aggressively, yes, but not too aggressively where he's leaving space behind him. Uh, in the uh, in the defensive zone, it's a different story because you have to rely a bit more on physicality, on positioning. That's still a work in progress. But off the rush, he's a really good defender, which gives him a solid floor. Um, because you need defensemen who are able to hop off the uh, hop off the bench and quickly get in position in order to prevent a uh, a counterattack, and he can definitely do that. Um, but offensively as well, he's got the skill set. He's got the uh, the hands, the passing. Maybe the awareness needs to come a bit of a way, but overall, just the the skill set of Goliath gives gives itself so well to a second pair role um, that I think he's a very very good value pick here at thirty one and. Obviously, it had to be with the Canadians pick uh, that they just traded for Alex Newhook. It's just, it's yeah. wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Little irony there. Chris, are you happy with the haul in round one for the Avs? Yeah, they, uh, you know, they, they had that 27 pick and then nothing until round five. Mm-hmm. So they when, when they made the deal with Montreal, they got two back. For new hook we didn't really feel like they were going to keep both of those they didn't they they went and they traded uh with tampa for for ross colton so overall you know taking everything in totality yeah i think they they like i said it, it, you know with the 27th pick uh they they need to start doing both they need to start filling roster spots because they're, they're going to have an overhaul of a roster next year uh with their depth pieces and they're doing that now and they've just addressed two really good prospects that are going to be coming into their prospect pool. So um, 
Yeah, I think it, it's it's been a good week so far for the Avalanche, and I think it's only just getting started. I think you're still going to see some moves. Chris McFarland is showing he is active. Um, so uh, it, it's an exciting time for the Avs, and it's, you know, with, with free agency right around the corner, I think they're, I mean, they're not going to be in the market for the big names, uh, but they're, they're making some savvy moves right now, and uh, I think these two draft picks are kind of emblematic of that. They're, they're so far, so good. All right. Well, for more on this selection and all the Avalanche's other moves around the draft and free agency, tune in to Locked On Avalanche for free on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.